The story of the Wilder Project is really a story of everything working. In the fall of 2019, our Forest Health Protection Unit in the National Forest identified an outbreak of mountain pine beetle. And, you know, mountain pine beetle is a natural part of the ecosystem. They are endemic to the forests all over the state of Colorado and across the Intermountain West, and they serve a natural role. But when they get to that epidemic or outbreak level, they can become a very impactful species. And we have an incredibly large population of lodgepole pine uh, here in the Taylor Basin that is really the last of the unaffected lodgepole forests in the state of Colorado. Many folks, in the, uh, if you're from Colorado or you visit Colorado frequently, have uh, experienced the mass mortality events on the I-70 corridor and Highway 40 going up towards Steamboat. And we're set up for a very similar experience if this outbreak uh, went unchecked. And so as soon as the district found this out last fall, we imme immediately began planning to uh, respond as rapidly as we can. But the uniqueness of this project is that beetles don't know boundaries. The beetle is spreading so quickly because first of all, we have these large, mature, overcrowded pine forests that haven't had a lot of forest management. And so basically, they are all the same forest type. They're all the same height. Most of them are the same diameter. They all grew up together. And for a bark beetle, that's like this beautiful buffet because you know, if you had aspen and dug fir and spruce intermixed in there, plus different age classes, then it makes it a lot harder for that bark beetle to get around and find the right hosts. When you just have this contiguous forest and everything's the same, then those bark beetle populations are able to just exponentially grow. And so we knew that we were gonna have to work with uh, the communities that are our neighbors right here uh, in the Taylor Canyon in a way that was gonna allow us to be as effective as possible and beat the beetles back to the extent that we possibly could. And so we started really three conversations almost simultaneously. One was we knew that we weren't gonna be able to move as rapidly as we wanted to using uh, the conventional ways that we put contracts together and acquire services in the Forest Service. So we started dialogue with our friends from the National Forest Foundation. The unique role that the NFF is able to play as a nonprofit organization, we have a lot of flexibility and, and nimbleness um, to able to uh, support our, par our partners at the, the federal and state level. We're also bringing a unique skill set and having uh, project development, administration, budgeting, fundraising, and all of that has really played a critical role in this project to get us to where we are out here running saws, slowing the spread of this beetle. The second partner that we reach out to is the Colorado State Forest Service. And in this project, we've been doing a lot of the actual uh, project layout and design, um, GPSing and timber cruising and making maps. Uh, and now we're really heavily focused on doing the project administration. So uh, working day in and day out with the contractor on the ground, uh, with the individual homeowners out here in the communities, uh, the log truck drivers, and, and making sure that we do everything that we said we were gonna do. Once we figured out what the extent of the outbreak was and where the affected lands were, uh, we started talking to our neighbors. And that includes uh, the Wilder on the Taylor community as well as the Gunnison Highlands community. Each one of those communities had private landowners within them that had affected stands. You know, as a homeowner, we were really excited to be a partner in this project. Um, the mountain pine beetle is something that none of us really understand, and it can be really a scary process when you're talking about coming in and, and logging and taking down trees, et cetera. The way that our homeowners looked at it is, it, this is a safety aspect, but it's also a preservation project. And all we're here to do is just do our part. With some really uh, frank conversations and some incredible openness from uh, our, our adjacent neighbors, we were able to move forward and um, that's why there's a helicopter in the air today. We're here today doing some emergency mitigation work on some uh, mountain pine beetle. So we're trying to do just a thinning and try to get all of the infected trees off the stand as possible. 
We're sitting on a large pocket of undisturbed lodgepole pine in this state. It's one of the last large stands of healthy lodgepole pine and we're ho hopes of uh, trying to stay ahead of the, the beetle problem so we don't lose our last green slopes. Uh, we're using the helicopter today to try to get to all that steep ground, try not to have the ground disturbance of uh, ground-based activity. It's working pretty good today. We're trying to get about 450 trees off this 78 acre piece uh, in hopes of trying to get this mitigated for this year and knock it down so maybe next year we can get it buttoned up. Here you are, you know, this is a uh, high intensity, high speed logging right here, 101. This is actually a pretty good landing location compared to some of the ones we do, but uh, hey, it's a proper tool for the job. We're hoping it'll take off and it'll work. And so it's all about the future of our forest. We're losing so much right now. We've lost so many species already in the pine beetle and the spruce beetle, the fir beetle, the budworm, you know, it's anything we can do right now to save what we got left is the most important thing. And uh, projects like this, we hope make a difference. You know, all we can do is try. It's better than throwing your hands up and giving up on it and saying, just let it do its thing.